Hello, this is Moodle Chahabi and this is our 11th video of our Adobe After Effects course from scratch. In our previous video, we've talked about the first folder in our effects and presets panel, the animation preset. It was a long folder and we went through all of it in details. Today, we will continue with the effects and presets panel and we will go through the most of the effects. You can find the video time frames for each effect in the video description below. Now without any further ado, let's start. Those are some samples of effects we will be doing today. Here we have the 3D channel folder. You might won't be using this folder much, as it works with the specific file extensions that has to be made by a 3D program like Cinema 4D. The 3D channel extract allows you to extract black and white colors, or increase or decrease each color as you want. Some more options here allow you to create some depth for your layers or characters, add some shade look, or fog, which is like transparency. Next effect here is the audio effect. Gives you a variety of options to control your audio and apply some effects to it. I will place my video into my timeline. There is an audio in this video. Open this drop menu and you can find your audio. You can control the audio levels from here. Hold and move your mouse right to increase or to the left to decrease. You can also open the waveform to see how your audio is formed. First effect here is the backwards and that will reverse your audio. Hold and drag it on your video or place it on your layer. Take a look at the waveform here. Once we add your effect, the waveform will be reversed. And you don't have much options to control here from the effect controls panel. Secondly, you have the bass and treble. Allows you to increase or decrease your bass or your treble. Next, I will take the high low pass. And from the filter option, you can choose which one you want to control. Is it the high or the low pass? The high pass option allows you to pass only the high tone or the high frequency in your audio and cut off the low tones or the low frequencies. The low pass option does the exact opposite. See here the waveform is kinda getting smaller cause it only passes the low frequencies through. We have another effect here. Parametric equalizer gives you a bunch of options to control the equalizer in your audio. Each option you are changing, you can see the effect on the red wave above. Another important and useful effect here is the stereo mixer, and it allows you to control the right or the left level of your audio. In case if you want to increase or decrease right or left level, at certain point of your audio. You can also create keyframes to cut off one level or increase another level. I will click on the stopwatch here to create a keyframe on the left level. Press U on your keyboard to show your keyframes. After 2 seconds I will create another keyframe. I will place my timeline indicator at the beginning and I will make a keyframe on the right level. Press U twice from your keyboard to show all your keyframes. I'm gonna take the right level all the way down to 0%. After 2 seconds as well, I will create another keyframe at 0% too. 
then only a frame further I will create another keyframe and put it back to 100%. So your sound will be only coming from the left level the first two seconds, then from both levels afterwards. Next folder here is Blur and Sharpen. Lots of options to use to sharpen or blur in your video or your image. First option here is Bilateral Blur. You already see some blurriness. You can increase the radius or the attrition to increase the blurriness. Second option, Camera Lens Blur. Kind of what you originally have in your digital camera. You can increase the blue radius from shape drop menu. You can have some alternatives. Try the triangle. You see that the light start to shape like a triangle. If you try the squares, you are changing them accordingly. Let's try now the CC cross blur. And it gives you the option to blur your material, radius X or radius Y. Increase the X radius. Kind of like blurring it horizontally. Try to increase the radius Y. And the blurriness here is kind of vertical. I will try the channel blur. You have got the RGB channels control along with the alpha channel which is the black and white. If you want only to blur the red parts. Let's try the blue. Repeat edge pixels. It's kind of important option. If you increase the alpha blurriness. You see the edges are kind of fading. Once you check the repeat edge pixels, you set the edges back to normal. From blur dimension, you can choose both horizontal and vertical, or only horizontal or vertical. Now to the Mooka AE, this here works like a mask. Works for tracking surfaces and stuff. Just click on the icon here to open the Mooka panel. It opens in a separate window. It has its own timeline. I will put my timeline indicator back at the beginning. Select your pen tool and it's kinda different than the regular pen tool that you're used to use. This one here is not very precise. You can make nice curves with it. I'm just gonna select the computer screen. After you finish, just press and hold those ends and move them out. To fix those round corners. What we have done now landed here in this layer, layer 1. Now from track drop menu, we have track forward and track backwards. The track backwards here is inactive due to our timeline indicator being placed at the beginning. So there is nothing to track backwards, only forwards. So hit track forwards. Now the plugin is tracking frame by frame. And even though the video is not moving, but the tracking is still not precise as you can see. Now go to file, then save it. Now close this window. Open the tracking data drop menu, and from create data tracking, click on it, and it choose layer 1. That was the layer that we created. Now I'm gonna get another video and drop it on top of this video. Select your initial video. Go to layer export to. And choose your top new video. Then hit apply export. Now we have to do some adjustments to place this new video on the right place on the top of the computer screen. Open the transform drop menu. And from the position and scale option, start adjusting your video to place it right where it belongs. Now with those corner pin tools, start to adjust each corner. 
we can do that using the values here or just hold each corner and move it manually as you play the video you will still need to do a lot of adjustments by the time I finish that 4 seconds video I would have finished 4 masks and got pretty good results I would rather be using masks other than this tool you can go back and watch our mask and alpha mat and alpha inverted mat video this is what the MOOC AE is for tracking some kind of surfaces like phone, computers, tablets and stuff and add another video or a picture into your selection next effect folder is channel those effects here give you the chance to separate all the channels like RGBA, red, green, blue and alpha and blend them in a certain way kind of like all the blending options you have on the layer menu or change certain color to a different color hold and drag your first option here on your video and like we just mentioned you have here the red, green and blue values if you added the blend effect on it we can see that the effects work in order in the effect controls panel we can blend this now with another layer I've got another video underneath it you can choose and select your second video now and from blend with original select the percentage you want to blend them with a good way to give your video transparency and blend two videos together I will try channel combiner and what the channel combiner does is to isolate certain channels or color and you can change that channel or that color to a different color if you open the from section here you will see red, green, blue and alpha channels you've also got hue, lightness and saturation let's select the red channel and I will change it to green only now all the red color channels have been changed to green let's try and change the green to blue now everything is blue you can isolate certain channels or change certain colors to another color next one here is Cinema 4D and that only applies to any Cinema 4D files or extensions next folder here is the color correction and if you are a designer you must be very familiar with the color correction thing it's a pretty long drop menu in here first three options are set and auto auto color auto contrast and auto levels just hold and drag it on your video you can leave them the way you are or adjust them however you want you've got black and white gives you here all the channels that you might need and also add a tint it changed the color from here and after you do so just check that letter box in here brightness and contrast increase or decrease both of them as you please I will go down here to color balance to adjust all the colors shadow they are very useful effects and they always come handy however there is no right or wrong in color correction it always depends on your taste and also depends on your video the circumstances that you had while shooting your video as well as depends on your camera so there is no fixed values that you can memorize for this panel next effect here is distort a pretty good and useful effect that you can use I will go with you through the basics here if you tried the first one is your wrap you see you got those points in here where you can control each part of your video you can either control it manually like hold and move it
or you can use the parameters you've got in the effect controls panel. I'm gonna animate this effect. I will create a keyframe on the top right vertex. Press on new from the keyboard to show your keyframes. Couple seconds further, I will take the right top corner and bend it a little bit. Select your keyframes, F9 to easy ease them. And you can get a cool effect for your video. Next, I will go with the CC flow motion. You see you've got two points in here. Or you can call them knots. You can manually hold and move those knots to whatever point you need in your video. Or from the parameters, you can use the X and Y options. From amount 1 here, which is the not 1, you can increase the value here. And you can see that the video is like getting sucked in this knot. And same for the second knot too. It gives you some effects that might come handy to you. Even after you finish, you can still move any of those knots to place wherever you want within your video. So you can kinda see what it does and set it on your best effect. It's kinda fun playing with those knots and with this panel in general. Up next I'm trying the CC lens. It's obvious from its name, kinda like the camera lens you have. You can control the size of the lens from here. And with simple two keyframes, we can use this option to make a nice transition or effect. I will put the size here down to 0%. Place your timeline indicator at the beginning. Then click on the stopwatch here to create your first keyframe. Press U from the keyboard to see your keyframes. After two seconds, I will increase the size here and put it up to like 160%. I can also give it a nice kick from the graph editor and you can get a nice cool transition effect. I will take the CC page there, another cool effect I use often. See this point here? It allows you to turn and move your video like a page. From the controls in here, you see all the four corners. Select which one that you want to use to control. If you select the top left corner, you can adjust your page turn from this point here. From this fold radius, choose how much you want to fold. And the light direction gives you more options for realism. Back opacity also helps you with the realism. You can control here how much the opacity of the back. You can also animate this effect. Place your timeline indicator at the beginning. From the fold position, click on the stopwatch to create your first keyframe. A couple seconds further. I will shrink my preview here a little so I can have a space down here. Then I will hold and drag the folding point all the way to the bottom right corner till it disappears to get your second keyframe. Easy ease your keyframes. Put my preview panel back to fit. Hit the space bar to see the animation or your transition. The stored folder is a large menu and I'm just going through the basics of it. Next here we have the expression control. 
Expressions are kind of a way to add mathematical operation to any of your parameters. If you open the transform option, you can create animation with any of those parameters in here. Simple animations with the scale option. Click on the stopwatch, make your first keyframe, put the value down to 0%. A few seconds further, I will put it back on 100% to create my second keyframe. Now if you press on Alt from the keyboard and click on the stopwatch, you will be opening the expression section. And from this letter arrow here where it says expression language menu, open it and you will find all the expressions you need. For an instant, go to property, and choose temporal wiggle. You will get your expression here. Some expressions you have to adjust them. Otherwise they won't work. From frequency here you have to add your value. How many times you want the effect to happen. Let's say two times. And from the AMP let's say three times. Just click with your mouse anywhere outside the expression area to close it. If your expression is wrong, it won't work, and you will be getting a message in your preview window saying so. Now if you tried your simple scale animation, you can see your temporal wiggle effect combined with your scale. If you change your expression, remove this 2 and the 3. This is the message you will get if you have an expression error. We haven't talked about expression yet in this course, however, it's the up next video right after we finish the effects and presets panel. Next we have the generate folder and effect, another cool and handy folder. It's a long menu, it will be our last folder for this video. We're gonna continue the rest of the effects and presets panel in our next video. First we have here four color gradient. I have a solid layer here. It gives you four colors. And each one got a point where you can hold and move it to control it manually. or from the parameters, control them from the X, Y position options. And also you have the option to click on the color and change it to whichever color you want. Control how much you want to blend between them, as well as the opacity. And you have here multiple blending mode. Exactly like what you have in Photoshop and other graphic programs. Second option, Advanced Lightning. A cool lightning effect. Control the start and the end of it. Multiple lightning type. Open the core settings, it changed the lighting and color. Increase or decrease the opacity of the core. Also change the radius of the core more or less. Next I will take the CC light sweep. See that point in here? That's where you can hold and move the light. Increase the width of the light. Increase the intensity. You change the light color if you want. You can also change the direction of the light. Full axis and cool effect. Let's animate this light. 
move the slide to the far left from the logo from the center parameter here click on the stopwatch to create your first keyframe press C to show your keyframes and after a couple seconds I'm gonna move the slide to the far right Easy is my keyframes. Hit the space bar to play it. You see the light sweep here is going over your logo. Now the CC threads. Some cool thread looking here. Increase or decrease either width or height. How many overlaps? Also the direction of the thread. From the coverage, how much the threads cover? and how much shadow in between them finally the texture increase it to give it more a realism look next effect here I'm gonna use is the gradient ram gives you a nice gradient which you can control and adjust to your favor I can swipe colors I will change from linear to radial Hold and drag this point to the center. Then hold and grab this point to the outside. Replace the black color if you want. You can adjust your gradient from this point here. Move it in or out to get the gradient that you want. Here I've got the grid. It's very beneficial if you're working on something and need a grid to measure things or lay things out in a certain way. You can move it right or left, up or down to increase or decrease the lines. Kinda looks like the Excel table. You can choose the grid color too. Both of grid and ruler are very essential during our designing process. My last demo here will be for the lens flare. Pretty sure you have seen this before in the Photoshop filter. Let me bring a video here to animate this. I'm gonna take the lens flare here all the way out of the video. Click on the stopwatch in the flare center parameter. Press U from the keyboard to see your keyframes. A few seconds further, I will move the flares to the other side of the video. Press the space bar to play this. That was a cool effect. That was our video for today. Went through a bunch of effects and presets. Some cool effects that come handy to any designer. One more video left to finish this panel. But it's a very important panel and it's very good to know as much as we can about it. Tune in with me for the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good day.